Pancake, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the colors of life. Children. They're free from vices like anger and hatred, but believe it or not, some children have committed crimes so terrible that even the most hardened criminals would be surprised to hear about them. When children break the law, they're usually tried as minors, but there are cases when they're tried as adults depending on the nature of their crimes. This means that children can be sentenced to extremely long prison terms, sometimes even life sentences. We've prepared a list of the top 15 most dangerous teenagers with life of very long prison sentences. We want to emphasize that not all teenagers committed crimes with malicious intent. Our goal is not only to tell you about criminals, but also about those who simply made a very grave mistake and suffered the most terrible punishment of their lives. Number 15. Eddie Devine Eddie Devine, a teenager from Jackson who sentenced to a colossal 90 years in prison. The 17-year-old was found guilty of two charges, armed car theft and kidnapping. Devine and Remy Harvey, who was only 13 years old, broke into a woman's car and attacked her with an ice pick. They kidnapped her and headed in a known direction. Fortunately, the woman managed to escape when the boys stopped to refuel the car. Devine was arrested by the Florida police. On December 20, 2014, he was sentenced to 30 years for assault, 30 years for armed robbery, and 30 years for kidnapping. It's good that the woman survived and the criminals received a fair punishment. Number 14. Roxana Sikorsky Roxana Sikorsky was only 15 years old. In October 2014, she woke up in the middle of the night and attacked her brother. Previously, she had also tried to run away from her parents and had physically abused other siblings. For all these offenses, Roxana was sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2016 when she was only 17 years old. Before her sentence, Roxana's mother appealed to the court and pleaded for clemency for her adopted daughter. Lorenz Sikorsky said she was desperate and that Roxana needed constant psychological help. She was still a fragile girl and adult prison would destroy her innocent world. Roxana was only four years old when the Sikorskis adopted her and her two brothers from Poland because they were subjected to cruel treatment by their biological parents. Roxana was diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder in childhood, a mental illness in which children are unable to form emotional attachments to their parents. The devastated teenager looked sincerely remorseful in court. She apologized to her parents for not being the daughter they wanted her to be. We noted that often the reason for a crime is a psychological deviation. Take care of your mental health and let's move forward. Number 13. Jessica Carline Jessica Carline is a young girl whose reckless driving caused the death of two people. She was 17 years old at the time of the incident and pleaded guilty to two counts of vehicular manslaughter in court back in April 2015. Her admission of guilt to both counts of the charges allowed her defense to seek no more than 16 years of imprisonment. According to investigators from the police department, Jessica Carline was driving her car in an easterly direction. Her car went off the curb at an intersection, hit a sign in front of the hospital, and then crashed into the building itself. Her passengers Brandon Avery and Amanda Strickland, both 27 years old, died from injuries sustained in the accident. In her interview with the police, Carline admitted to being high. The police also found that the car was going very fast, around 76 miles per hour, and there were no signs that the girl was trying to brake and no one in the car was wearing a seat belt. We would like to add that road safety is everyone's responsibility. Please wear your seat belt and observe the speed limit while driving, and look both ways before crossing the street. Number 12. Stuart Harling Stuart Harling was 18 years old when he ambushed 33-year-old Cheryl Moss. The accounting intern attacked the nurse while she was smoking in the back parking lot of St. George Hospital. Police reports show that Stuart was an obsessed teenage criminal, and they believe he would have done it again if he hadn't been caught. In March 2012, Harling was sentenced to life in prison. The victim's husband told the police in an interview, we are all glad that this evil man was caught quickly so that no one else had to lose their life. Police determined that Harling spent hours studying a TV show about criminals. He fantasized about violent crimes and wrote a blog about killing a black woman. Unfortunately, Mrs. Cheryl Moss became his real victim when it was time to bring his sick fantasy to life. It's a shame that no one was able to help this guy and address his mental health problem. Number 11. Dylan Shoemaker Dylan Shoemaker was charged with second-degree murder and first-degree assault in connection with the death of one-year-old Austin Smith. Shoemaker, who was 16 at that time, was watching his girlfriend's children. For unknown reasons, he hit Smith. It was determined that the child died from a blunt force injury. 16-year-old Dylan pleaded guilty to the murder in March 2013. 
During the trial, Shoemaker cried and apologized to the victim's mother, saying that he didn't mean to harm Austin. However, the mother, Ashley Smith, refused to accept his apologies. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Dillon is currently serving his sentence at the Clinton Correctional Facility. He is eligible for parole in 2031. His sentence was reduced by an appeals court in February 2016. This is yet another example of how one tragic incident can ruin a person's life. Number 10. Gregory Brooks and Rio John Thompson. An elderly couple from northwest Indiana were attacked and their bodies were dumped in a forest in 2009. Gregory Brooks Jr. and Rio John Thompson committed the heinous crime. The bodies of Ruby and Milton McClendon were discovered in October 2009, about two miles from their home in a forest preserve, where they were robbed. Their home was also burglarized. 19-year-old Gregory Brooks Jr. was sentenced to 120 years in prison. Brooks Sr., the suspect's father, said he had tried to keep his son away from street gangs but failed. Another suspect was Rio John Thompson, who was only 17 years old. The prosecution claims that Brooks and Thompson attacked the McClendons and stole $50 in cash, a rifle, jewelry, and other items before locking the couple in a closet. Later, they forced them into the trunk of their car and drove them to the forest, where they killed the couple. It is appalling that greed was the motive for this murder. Number 9. John Silva A guy has been sentenced to life imprisonment without parole for strangling his gaming buddy. 15-year-old John Silva, who showed no reaction to the sentence, was tried as an adult and found guilty of first-degree murder. The body of his victim, 12-year-old Jerry Lee Allen Jr., was found tied up at the bottom of a garbage reservoir. A note found near the body included lines, such as, strip down to underwear, tie hands, gag, and cover eyes, which investigators said were written by Silva, who was a neighbor and classmate of Jerry's. On March 16, 2001, the trial took place. 15-year-old John Silva sat calmly, in handcuffs, as the judge of Patnam County delivered the verdict. The sentencing was quick, less than an hour, with brief statements from Jerry's family and friends asking the judge to set an example for other children and send Silva to prison for life. Silva was not old enough to be considered for the death penalty. Penalty. We will leave this story without comment. Number 8. Heather Oppel, a 14-year-old girl who has been sentenced to 22 years in prison without parole. Her mother, Barbara Oppel, lived with 64-year-old Jerry Dwayne Hyman and his 89-year-old mother, whom she cared for. To steal $40,000, she paid five teenagers, including her own 13-year-old daughter, to kill Hyman. Jerry Hyman died in bewilderment. He was attacked by a group of teenagers who ambushed him when he entered his home in Everett. Washington on the evening of April 13, 2001. One boy hit him on the head with an aluminum bat, and the man fell to the ground. While the first teenager delivered crushing blows with a large bat, two other teenagers swung miniature bats, souvenirs from the Seattle Mariners baseball team, at Hyman. The attack turned into a frenzy when two teenage girls joined in with a 10-inch kitchen knife. They took turns stabbing Hyman until he died. Then the teenagers cleaned up the floor, loaded the body into a car and dumped the remains by the side of a road on the outskirts of Everett. This is a horrific story with many participants that is hard to believe could actually happen. Number 7. Curvus Yassims Curvus Yassims was only 15 years old when he attacked and killed two other teenagers in 2015. Sims was sentenced to 70 to 120 years in prison. He pleaded guilty to the death of James Starr and Brandon Phelps. Sims went to buy a firearm in December 2015. When he left the store, he thought thought he was being robbed, pulled out the weapon and attacked both teenagers. At best, Courvoisier will have to serve 35 years before he is eligible for parole. His lawyer claimed that the boy panicked when he realized that one of the teenagers had a gun. Sims told the judge that he regretted everything. James Martin Davis, Sims' lawyer, requested a minimum sentence of 20 years. He said that his client didn't intend to do it, and he had some problems at the age of 12 to 13 because he grew up without a father. Like many children, his role models were people on the streets. Number 6. Brenda Spencer Brenda Spencer, a 16-year-old girl who lived in a house across the street from the school was convicted of shooting. On January 29, 1979, 16-year-old Brenda Spencer killed two people and injured nine others when she opened fire on Grover Cleveland Elementary School in San Diego from the window of her house across the street. The victims were school principal Burton Rag and custodian Mike Zucker. Eight students and a police officer were 
injured. Spencer pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and assault with a deadly weapon and was sentenced to life imprisonment. When asked why she did it, she famously said, I don't like Mondays. At the time, she also told negotiators, it was a lot of fun seeing kids shot. It's hard to comment on such an act, but the important thing is that the guilty person was punished. Number 5. Lionel Tate Lionel Alexander Tate is the youngest known American citizen ever sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He was convicted for the brutal murder of six-year-old Tiffany. In January 2001, in Broward County, Florida, Tate was only 14 years old. He was left alone with Tiffany, who was visiting him while his mother Kathleen was looking after her. The children were playing too loudly and disturbing Kathleen's cooking, so she sent them to another room. About 45 minutes later, Tate approached Approached his mother and told her that Tiffany wasn't breathing. He told her that while they were wrestling, he grabbed her by the head and she hit her head on a table. After hearing such stories, it makes one want their children always in sight. Tate was convicted of hitting Tiffany so hard that her liver was torn. Tate was convicted of hitting Tiffany so hard that her liver was torn, and she also had serious bruises on her legs, feet, and neck. The nature of the bruises on her body was similar to injuries sustained from a car collision or falling from a third floor balcony. The judge sentenced Tate to life imprisonment. The main argument of the prosecution was the nature of Lionel Tate's actions. It was not just playful child's behavior. Lionel Tate's actions were cold, cold and unspeakably cruel. Nevertheless, his punishment was criticized for the treatment of juvenile offenders in Florida's justice system. In 2004, Tate's sentence was overturned by the state appellate court on the basis that his mental competence was not evaluated before the trial. Number 4. George Steeney George Steeney Jr. was convicted for the murder of two young girls. In March 1944, at the age of 14, he attacked and took the lives of 11-year-old Betty June and 7-year-old Emma Thames in his hometown of Alcalo, South Carolina. George was sentenced to death and executed in the electric chair in June 1944, becoming the youngest American to be sentenced to and executed by the death penalty in the 20th century. His trial took place on April 24, 1944, when he appeared before a jury who took only 10 minutes to deliberate before declaring him guilty. The judge sentenced him to death by electrocution. Steeny's family appealed to Governor Alling Johnson for clemency, considering his age, but the governor only referred the case for reconsideration, which led to nothing. Only after his death did the South Carolina court rule that he didn't receive a fair trial and was therefore wrongfully executed, but it was already too late. Number 3. Joshua Phillips Joshua Earl Patrick Phillips was only 14 years old when he took the life of his 8-year-old neighbor, Maddie Clifton. In November 1998, Joshua attacked and killed his neighbor and friend. The following year, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. In his ex explanation, Phillips wrote that he attacked Clifton to spare her from tears after he accidentally hit her with a baseball while they were playing. According to Phillips, he was afraid of punishment from his abusive father and he was home alone when Maddie, who lived across the street from him, came over and asked him to come outside to play. He agreed even though his father did not allow him to have friends. His parents were not at home and he went out to play with Maddie. During the game, he accidentally hit her in the eye with the ball and she started crying crying and screaming. In a panic, Phillips was afraid his father would come home and hurt him, so he dragged the girl inside his house and hit her on the head with a baseball bat. Joshua decided to hide the girl's body under his bed. It is frightening to imagine what the boy was feeling at that moment. He was arrested when his mother discovered Maddie's body. Phillips was tried as an adult and the trial was moved from Duval County to Polk County due to concerns about publicity. Phillips' lawyer didn't call anyone that a defense witness even discouraged his parents from testifying. Phillips also didn't speak in court. It took the jury only two hours to convict Phillips, who was later sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. He couldn't be sentenced to death because he was younger than 16. We don't know how the parents can cope with the consequences of such a terrible situation. Number 2. Antonio Barbo Antonio Barbo was only 14 when he attacked his grandmother and, with the help of a friend, took her life using an axe. Barbo and his friend Nathan Pappy were also found guilty by the court. This happened in a horrifying way. The unsuspecting old woman invited her grandson and his friend to her home. 
but when she turned her back to call Antonio's mother, he struck her in the head with an axe. After that, he ran to the bathroom, feeling nauseous. When he came back, he saw his friend Pappy hitting the grandmother lying on the floor with a hammer. It's chilling to even think about it. Barbo was sentenced to at least 36 years in prison back in 2013. He will be eligible for parole when he completes his sentence. It's worth noting that Antonio tried to read an apology statement in court, but he couldn't hold back his tears and started sobbing. He handed the letter to his lawyer, who also had to hold back his tears when he finished reading the statement. The judge said that this sentence was the minimum for this crime. In defense of the boy, it should be noted that Barbo suffered a traumatic brain injury in 2009, which caused cognitive impairment and played a role in his decision to commit the crime. However, his mental problems weren't enough to ignore the heinous nature of the crime. You may wonder what happened to his friend. Well, Antonio's friend Pappy claimed that the attack was Antonio's idea. When both boys realized that the grandmother was dead, they panicked and tried to drag her into a car, leaving a bloody trail behind. But they couldn't load her into the car and left the body in the garage. Then they stole several items, including a bag. 